You've seen the normal languages like C++, Java, C Sharp, etc. And whether you've seen them or not, there is always someone to argue that there is an impracticality in one of the languages. But no matter what, they can't be as impractical as the following languages. I'm Chopped Porks, and today we'll be counting down the top 10 esoteric languages, or in other words, joke languages. Just a warning, these languages do exist, but only for the purpose of getting a crack out of you. To kick off our list, we have Brain Fuck. Created in 1993 by Urban Moeller, Brain consists of eight simple commands and an instruction pointer. But despite the humorous nature of the language, it has a small compiler of only 100 bytes. Ironically, however, it was uploaded with a readme file that asked the question, who can program anything useful with it? And if you thought all that was nonsensical, just take a look at the code for a simple Hello World program. Number 9. Number 9 is Intercol, or as its full name goes, Compiler Language with No Pronounceable Acronym. It was created by Don Woods and James M. in 1972 that was meant to poke fun at the aspects of a programming languages at the time, which had some pretty spooky syntaxes. Along with only having five operators, the language is composed to be intentionally tedious. You can see what I mean by comparing Intercol's Hello World program with the famous language C's Hello World program. Number 8. Ever ask yourself what the best way to mock a programming language was? Probably not, but Alec Mengrahani wasted no time in concluding that it was to mock the worst feature. So what he did is make Adjusone. Adjson was made to mock the JSON language, or as it's also known, JavaScript object notation, which, long story short, has a questionable structure for data types. But instead of paradising just the data types, he modeled the whole language after them, which pretty much means a lot of quotation marks. What you see here is a program that will output the factorial of five. Number seven. In 1998, Ben Olmsted created Malbolge. Named after the Eighth Circle of Hell from Dante's Inferno, Malbolge was designed to be impossible to use, just like the previous languages on this list. This was done so well that it took two years after the release before any program was made with it. Funny thing is, it wasn't even created by a human. It was generated from a beam search algorithm, which was designed by Andrew Cook. A beam search is a conversation for another video, but it makes sense that this is the case because this Hello World program appears to be complete gibberish, not only to the average eye, but as well as an intermediate to professional programmer. Number six. Ever seen one of these floating around on the internet? Probably not, because they stopped being popular in 2007, which just happens to be the same year in which LOL Code was released. LOL Code, developed by Adam Lindsay, designed the language and its structures after the LOLcat meme. Despite being an irrelevant meme now, the language is creatively typed, using hi as a script start point, and replacing the generic import command with can has, then the library name, and even going so far as to replace if with is. Number five. Take a look at this document. Looks like a blank page, right? Well, April Fools was the day of which Whitespace was released. Whitespace is a language that was developed by Edwin Brady and Chris Morris at the University of Durham. The entire language consists of Whitespace. This includes a maximum of three commands that are put in different combinations in order to make certain commands. Remember that blank page from earlier? Well, it was actually a program, but I don't know, I don't know what it does. Number four. Chris Pressey is the name of the person who developed Bafungi in 1993. At least I hope that's how you pronounce it. Like many esoteric languages, it was designed to be the most difficult language to compile. But out of all of them, this one probably did the best at it, because the rules for the language are utmost ridiculous. Not only are you limited to an 80 by 25 cell base language, your code's execution route is controlled by left, right, up, and down arrow keys. So you're left with diagrams that demonstrate how your code is executed looking like this. To put it simply, you know that mumbo jumbo Hollywood portrays as hacking? No way. I'm getting hacked. 
A port skin? No, no, this is major. Well, Bafunchi looks exactly like that. Just a massive pile of code that is meant to confuse the viewer. Number three. Developed by David Morgan, the zombie language is an acronym for Zombie Oriented Machine Being Interface Engine. Zombie, as it states on the website, is a language designed for necromancers. The language is quite creative in its entirety, having commands like undead, demons, and ghosts to replace data types and other aspects. So you get final scripts looking like this. Unfortunately, there is no real compiler for the language, only a Python interpreter. But that doesn't mean you can't make a script with this, and the fact that you can makes it all the more cooler. Number two. Second to first is the Shakespeare language, or SPL for short. Made by Carl Weiberg and John Aslund, SPL is based on Shakespeare and his plays. It is mostly based on input and output, and ends up looking very much like an actual play script, as you can see here. The reason this one takes second is because instead of the languages from earlier that are near impossible to use, this one actually could be used for some sort of work. Number one. Taking first place is Arnold C. Developed by Laurie Hartika, Arnold C. is a language developed out of the one-liners of Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's right, you can make a program out of this. Hey, you want to be a farmer? Here's a couple of acres. With hundreds of quotes to choose from, Hartika certainly chose right. Using... It's showtime. For starting programs. And using... Talk to the hand. For printing output. There are many other quotes utilized to their fullest potential, so I'll be providing a link in the description below where you can find Arnold C. And that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, comment down below, and tell me how I'm doing. I'm open to criticism. And finally, good luck in your endeavors.